Exciting times, isn't it? Let's start with the man at the moment, though. Um, that's Darmish. <laughs> and also Manchester United's new defensive signing, Lissandro Martinez. Darmish, uh, Eric Ten Hag has got his man, even though have they paid more than they would have liked to here? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of talk that this fee was going to be a lot less than the £57 million that Manchester United will eventually have to pay, provided Lissandro Martinez... Um, he basically uh, does all his add-ons, basically. That's what the fee is, £57 million all in. It's £48.5 million initial fee, plus an £8.5 million, depending on performance-related add-ons. This is a player that he's been after for the whole of the transfer window. Arsenal, you remember, were interested as well. But I think what swayed it for Manchester United was the fact that Lissandro Martinez had played under Eric Ten Hag at Ajax, was a regular under Eric Ten Hag in the last couple of seasons, and also his versatility as well. He can play at left-back, he can play in the left-central defensive role, and he can play in holding midfield as well. And I think Eric Ten Hag likes that versatility. And if you look around football, a lot of managers are always looking looking for a left-sided central defender. There aren't many around. And so I think he really did pinpoint Lissandra Martinez as someone he's worked with before, someone he trusts, and someone who can adapt to the philosophy that Eric Ten Hag will bring to Manchester United immediately. With regard to when this will be finally done, the agreement is in place now. It is dependent on uh, Lissandra Martinez passing his medical, agreeing those personal terms which aren't seen to be a problem at all, and, of course, the visa requirements as well. But Lissandra Martinez, more or less now a Manchester United player. OK. Uh, we can't talk about United without mentioning Frankie de Jong. Right, where are we at with this? No move, actually, because... Frankie de Jong is actually with the Barcelona squad now in the States for their pre-season tour. They've just been joined, of course, by their new signing, Robert Lewandowski, as well. This is an interesting scenario, though, because Manchester United are quite comfortable where they are with this deal. They have a broad agreement with Barcelona that's worth around €85 million, Euros, including add-ons, which is around £72 million. Pounds. However, all the noise is coming from Spain and from Barcelona are suggesting that Frankie de Jong doesn't want to go to Manchester United. He's happy at Barcelona. The information we're getting, however, is while he's happy at Barcelona, he's open to coming to Manchester United to work under Eric Ten Hag. There's a theme here, isn't there, with these Manchester United signings? Players that Eric Ten Hag knows very, very well. And he obviously played under Eric Ten Hag for Ajax, did de Jong, when they made it to the semi-finals of the Champions League not too long ago. So... The issue at the moment is these deferred wage payments because de Jong, along with a lot of other Barcelona players, took pay cuts during the pandemic. And as a result, he's now owed between 14 and 17 million pounds for those two years of wage cuts. He's due that money. He wants that money. I mean, you could argue that he would be owed that money regardless of whether he went to Manchester United or not. I just wonder whether Barcelona are trying to play a little game here because they know that Manchester United's number one priority is a central midfielder. They know Manchester United's number one priority is Frankie de Jong. United, however, will not overpay. That's been the mantra of this transfer window. They will walk away from a deal if they don't feel it's a reasonable one. So they're quite comfortable with the position that they're in and the broad agreement that they have with Barcelona. I just wonder whether Barcelona are just making it public. No, he's not going anywhere. It's our intention that he stays so that maybe Manchester United raise their offer a little bit, somewhat offsetting some of those wages that de Jong is owed and so that they won't have to pay de Jong the full £17 million. That's just me speculating. That's just me thinking what game are Barcelona playing here because he's actually gone on the tour, like I said before. So they're playing everything in their hands. They want everything to be done on their terms, do Barcelona. There's obviously all, all this talk about their financial situation as well. But, I mean, look, they're selling part of their TV rights to fund some of these signings. They were in the free transfer market earlier on in the window, signing the likes of Christensen and Kessie, but they were both free transfers. But since then, they've spent quite big money, haven't they? £58 million on Rafinha and what looks like it's going to be about £45, £50 million 
on Robert Lewandowski as well. I just wonder whether they need to recoup that money and they could recoup that money in one big swoop if they were to sell De Jong to Manchester United. It just seems, though, that this is a saga now. This will go on for a little while longer because while those deferred wage payments are still an issue between Barcelona and De Jong, that move is being stalled. OK. All right, so what type of player will uh, Manchester United be getting in Lissandro Martinez? Well, Martinez's passing was a standout in last season's Eredivisie. He averaged more passes per 90 minutes than any other player. Well, only two players completed more passes in the opposition half, more passes forward per 90 minutes. He also uh, had the second most touch touches and ranked ninth for interceptions. Martinez also completed the most successful long passes of anyone in the Ajax squad and the most headed clearances. Despite his height, he won 71% of aerial duels of the two clubs interested in him this summer. Manchester United and Arsenal. Harry Maguire was the only centre-back at either club to better that ratio.